months ago, I made a video that was pretty critical of the visible noise in many ray trace games. There are games that just don't use a high enough resolution for their effects. There are games with noticeable surface grain. There are games with heavy denoising that results in surface boiling. There are games where ray tracing hurts texture quality. And there are even examples of ray tracing causing noticeable responsiveness issues with lighting. All of these problems end up hurting what is supposed to be a technology that improves visual quality. Now, back in 2023, NVIDIA launched a technology that was designed to combat a lot of these issues. It was branded DLSS Ray Reconstruction, an AI-based denoiser for ray trace games. And while this did have some benefits in improving the sharpness of some ray traced effects, there were still problems with noise and loss of detail in common scenarios, many of which I showed in my ray tracing noise analysis. In 2025, NVIDIA have updated Ray Reconstruction as part of their DLSS 4 technology suite. The DLSS 4 version of this tech swaps out the old Convolutional Neural Network, or CNN, for a new transformer model. Essentially, this is a larger, higher quality AI model with further tuning to improve the quality of denoising. Does this updated version solve many of my complaints with ray tracing noise? Well, it's time to find out. The good news about DLSS4 Ray Reconstruction is that it's actually available on all NVIDIA RTX GPUs, unlike with multi-frame generation that is exclusive to the GeForce 50 series. While the new Transformer AI model is larger and more performance taxing, depending on the GPU architecture, it doesn't require any specific architectural component, just tensor cores, so compatibility remains the same as DLSS3 era Ray Reconstruction. As you'll see later, the performance hit isn't the same on every generation, but at least it works right back to the GeForce 20 series. Like with other DLSS4 technologies, there are two ways to access DLSS4 Ray Reconstruction. Either it's integrated into the game itself, which applies to titles like Cyberpunk 2077 and the new Hogwarts Legacy update, or you can override a DLSS3 Ray Reconstruction game to now use the DLSS4 version instead, using NVIDIA's driver override feature. Either way, a game needs an existing Ray Reconstruction implementation, but it does allow most Ray Reconstruction supporting games to be instantly Instantly upgraded to the latest version. Outside of this, third-party tools like DLSS Swapper and DLSS Updater can also upgrade DLSS 3 games to DLSS 4 if they aren't supported on NVIDIA's whitelist. For the image quality analysis section of this video, I'll be directly comparing DLSS 3 versus DLSS 4 Ray Reconstruction in a handful of examples. To do this, I've taken DLSS 4 games and manually downgraded them to DLSS 3.7.20 Ray Reconstruction, the most recent version prior to DLSS 4, while keeping everything else the same. And this allows us to isolate the impact of the improvements to Ray Reconstruction. In some games, it is possible to switch between the Transformer and CNN models right in the game without swapping the DLLs, but usually this impacts both the ray reconstruction and upscaling components at the same time. I wanted to keep the super resolution model at DLSS 4 level while only changing ray reconstruction, which is why I went with a downgrading method for comparison. The examples in this video were captured at 4K using a GeForce RTX 5090. Let's start with the good stuff. DLSS4 Ray Reconstruction is a significant improvement to stability. In particular, many surfaces are less prone to boiling when using the new version, which removes one of the ugly side effects to weak denoising. In this example, in Star Wars Outlaws, a game which is prone to boiling using DLSS3 Ray Reconstruction, the new DLSS4 version is hugely improved in terms of the stability of surfaces. On the left you have DLSS 3, where a completely stationary surface just bubbles away when it shouldn't, whereas on the right with DLSS 4, it's much cleaner. Not 100% free from this artifact, but it is significantly reduced. And in fact, in other areas of the image, the stability actually does improve to pretty much perfect levels. In other examples like Cyberpunk 2077, this improvement largely applies in motion. There's less bubbling as denoised ray traced effects move, giving these effects greater stability and consistency from frame to frame. This can be very noticeable on some globally illuminated surfaces, and again, it's improved significantly with DLSS4 ray reconstruction. The new version is cleaner in motion and doesn't take as long to resolve a decent level of detail. In some situations, the difference in quality is night and day to the point where DLSS 3 looks like the game is being run at a lower resolution, and this is denoising, not upscaling, which is the same in both examples. 
Changes in exposure are much less likely to lead to brief boiling as well, indicating the new transformer model is better suited to these sorts of lighting adjustments. At times, this stability increase compounds with better quality denoising itself to create higher resolution reflections. In this Alan Wake 2 example, there's boiling in the metal reflections with DLSS 3, but switching to DLSS 4 ray reconstruction reduces boiling, increasing the apparent resolution of the reflection because the edges are more defined and consistent in motion. There's also the classic fan example that NVIDIA used to demonstrate DLSS 4 themselves, which I can confirm is a real benefit you get in games. As the fan spins and reveals the roof behind each blade, DLSS 4 is much more stable, including a reduction to both boiling and ghosting. Again, this is ghosting due to denoising, not upscaling. Rippling water surfaces also benefit from DLSS4 ray reconstruction, often this is a source of noise, but the new version does a better job of smoothing these details without further introducing issues. One of the major issues the original ray reconstruction technology had was its inability to resolve texture detail on surfaces that also needed denoising. In these instances, ray reconstruction would prioritize smoothing noise over preserving textures, leading to blurry and muddy surfaces. In some instances, DLSS 4 is a significant improvement in this area. For example, in Cyberpunk 2077, when looking at these shiny tiles, DLSS 3 ray reconstruction removes much of the marbling and surface detail, whereas DLSS 4 keeps texture detail. This applies in both stationary scenes and moving scenes. In both instances, DLSS 4 is a clear upgrade in texture quality. In fact, I would say the example in motion looks horrible and very blurry with DLSS 3, whereas with DLSS 4, it looks much more like a 4K image. This applied to other games as well, like Star Wars Outlaws, where the combination of reduced boiling and better texture preservation led to much higher quality surfaces across the game world for the most part. In the Alan Wake 2 elevator door example, you would have never known with DLSS 3 that the surface appears to be some sort of brushed metal, but the DLSS 4 upgrade to ray reconstruction reveals this detail in addition to other benefits. Here's another example in Cyberpunk 2077 where the textures on the roof of the car are clearer in motion when using DLSS 4 ray reconstruction as opposed to previous versions, and occasionally you'll see similar benefits in surfaces around the world. It's quite impressive how much of an improvement DLSS 4 ray reconstruction is for surface stability, resolution, and detail, and just how bad prior versions of denoising can look in comparison. It wouldn't have been as necessary to make that video getting stuck into how noisy a lot of ray trace games are if the surface quality seen with DLSS 4 was the norm. Denoising to the point of blurring textures or causing boiling is not the solution. Effective denoising preserves detail as well, and we're getting much closer to that with DLSS 4. Now, DLSS 4 ray reconstruction is not perfect though. Some areas haven't improved much compared to DLSS 3 ray reconstruction, and in other areas there are actually regressions, which is not good. For example, in the three main games I used for this video, all of which have native DLSS 4 integrations, I noticed that DLSS 4 could produce weird surface artifacts at times. In Star Wars Outlaws, you'll sometimes see a grid pattern in stationary ray traced effects. I've zoomed right in so you can see it clearly, but it is also visible at a normal viewing distance on a 32 inch 4K panel. I also saw this in Cyberpunk 2077, though less frequently, usually in globally illuminated areas. Here's an example of the issue in Alan Wake 2 as well. It's a pretty weird artifact, not sure what is going on there, and it's not fixed by using the very latest available DLLs in games that weren't already using it. I also spotted some instances where DLSS 4 ray reconstruction reduced texture quality, unrelated to the previous issue. I would say that around 80% of the time texture quality is better, but the other 20% of the time textures can become blurrier and more smoothed out. For example, here in Alan Wake 2 in this one scene, these textures are better, but these textures in a darker area are worse. Usually this regression isn't enough to hurt image quality relative to DLSS 3 because most of the image will actually be improved, certainly so when talking about boiling and other surface artifacts, but some tweaks to the model are necessary to ensure that texture quality is always preserved in addition to denoising. Ray reconstruction also still suffers from a noticeable difference in clarity and quality between stationary shots and motion, where standing still always delivers a higher quality output than in motion. This is of course due to how denoising works. If there are no changes between frames, denoising can temporally accumulate and resolve a higher level of detail. But if there are changes, it becomes much harder to resolve similar levels of detail. But still, it would have been nice to see some improvements here. 
The reality is that when you stop moving, after a second or two, ray reconstruction appears to slowly load in higher quality surfaces. It isn't actually loading anything, it's just the temporal system benefiting more and more from the lack of motion across that second. But when actually gaming, this can be noticeable, especially because in some instances, as soon as you take a step or make a camera move, the general render quality decreases. Now, DLSS4 ray reconstruction in motion is certainly superior to DLSS3, but in this area, it seems to work in basically the same way. As there's still quite a bit of temporal accumulation going on, there haven't been heaps of improvements to the responsiveness of the denoiser. It still takes a few frames to fully respond to lighting changes, which can create a floaty feeling as you move around and look at reflections or illumination on surfaces. The quality of each step in the accumulation and resolution process is improved, but the number of temporal samples being used to denoise seems quite similar to previous iterations, which still causes plenty of issues in games that don't use an overly high ray count for ray tracing. So this pet peeve I have with the responsiveness of ray trace lighting will persist even with DLSS4 ray reconstruction. As for performance, DLSS4 ray reconstruction is more taxing than DLSS3 ray reconstruction. Let's explore four different graphics cards using the latest version compared to DLSS3. Again, we're just measuring the impact of ray reconstruction, not upscaling. For each GPU, I've modified the settings to something realistically playable and with a similar output frame rate. So starting here with the GeForce RTX 5090, and here I'm testing 4K with DLSS quality enabled, and typically using the highest in-game settings. This leads to around a 60fps output in Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, or a higher 90fps output in Star Wars Outlaws. Using DLSS4 ray reconstruction causes a 4% hit in Alan Wake, a 5% hit in Cyberpunk, and a 7% hit in Outlaws. So not an insignificant impact, but in my opinion it's quite worthwhile given the image quality is generally quite a bit better. The RTX 4070 Super is less powerful and uses the generation prior Ada Lovelace architecture. To run these games at around 60fps I had to drop to 1440p with DLSS quality and lower the presets as well. But despite these changes, the impact from DLSS4 ray reconstruction is quite similar to the RTX 5090. A 4% impact in Alan Wake, a 6% impact in Cyberpunk, and a 6% impact in Outlaws. Based on this, it's safe to say the tensor cores in Blackwell and Ada are going to be good enough to run the new Transformer model at an acceptable performance cost. The RTX 3090 is roughly equivalent to an RTX 4070 Super in ray tracing performance, so I used the exact same settings for both GPUs. The main difference here is the architecture, and what was interesting to note is that the 3090 suffers from a greater hit when using DLSS4 ray reconstruction, an 18% loss to FPS in both Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077. Interestingly, there is no performance impact in Star Wars Outlaws, but this is because it seems like the game forces the use of the CNN model on generations prior to the 40 series. Unlike the other two games, there is no option to switch between models, the game does it for you, and in this instance it chooses Transformer for 40 and 50 series, and CNN for 30 and 20 series, hence no impact between DLSS 3 and 4 in Outlaws on the RTX 3090. The most likely explanation for the performance difference between Ampere and Ada Lovelace is the difference in tensor core architecture, with Ada supporting a wider range of precisions that are potentially being utilized here, though we don't quite know for sure. As for Turing, with the RTX 2080 Ti, this GPU is really only suitable for low quality ray tracing today. I had to dial back the settings to 1080p with DLSS quality and the lowest quality settings that I've used so far. In Alan Wake 2, I saw a 27% FPS reduction using DLSS 4 ray reconstruction versus DLSS 3, and a 32% reduction in Cyberpunk 2077. This makes it hard to recommend the use of the newer model on older 20 series GPUs, though I'm not sure how much it matters given the overall ray tracing performance of these cards is pretty weak, and of course you do need ray tracing to use ray reconstruction. Overall, I was impressed testing DLSS4 ray reconstruction, certainly much more impressed than I was testing multi-frame generation. The new Transformer model that's being deployed here generally results in a significant increase to visual quality. There are major improvements to stability, surface boiling, texture preservation, and overall detail, which helps to deliver better ray traced surfaces. Using this technology makes ray tracing feel like less of a downgrade in detail, which minimizes the visual cost of achieving better lighting quality and accuracy. 
A lot of these surface and detail issues were clear problems with DLSS3 ray reconstruction and other forms of denoising being used across today's ray trace games. It's nice to get ray traced lighting, but the noise can be pretty disgusting in some games, giving the presentation a soupy, low resolution look, especially in motion. DLSS4 is a big step in the right direction towards improving how ray traced games look, and in all of the games I assessed, I was much happier with the DLSS4 output. While it is quite an impressive improvement that should be instantly noticeable in games, I wouldn't say it's fixed all of my ray tracing noise complaints. DLSS4 ray reconstruction still has some surface boiling in worst case scenarios, there's still a noticeable difference in detail between standing still and in motion, and it still struggles to be responsive and high quality when ray counts are low. There's also a few regressions compared to DLSS3, like the occasional weird artifact and some reductions to texture quality. But for the most part, it's worth using, especially on RTX 50 and RTX 40 series GPUs where it seems the performance impact relative to DLSS3 is around 5%. It struggles more on Ampere-based RTX 30 GPUs, but it could still be worth using there, while on RTX 20 series cards you can basically forget about it, both due to the performance cost and the lack of ray tracing performance on those cards in modern games. It's great to see Nvidia delivering this sort of update without locking it to a specific GPU generation though, so as many people can benefit as possible. I do have a couple of recommendations for game developers based on this testing. Firstly, if you're developing a ray trace game, probably consider integrating DLSS4 ray reconstruction. There are some other good denoising solutions in games, but often they're pretty lackluster and create a bad output. The quality from DLSS4 is great, and there's far fewer downsides than DLSS3 ray reconstruction, so I would recommend exploring it. Secondly, I would recommend allowing gamers to choose the model that's used for upscaling and ray reconstruction separately. In Cyberpunk and Alan Wake, you can choose between the CNN and Transformer models, but this applies to both upscaling and denoising together. Separating those options would allow for more performance fine-tuning, especially on older GPUs like Ampere where ray reconstruction can be taxing. Nvidia also need to keep working on this technology because I can see it getting better with more training and tweaks. The weird artifacts need fixing, but a focus on responsiveness would also be nice to reduce that gap in quality between standing still and motion. Maybe with DLSS 5 ray reconstruction, we'll see some significant improvements to those things. So anyway, that's it for this look at DLSS 4 ray reconstruction. Again, quite an impressive technology, quite a good feature that NVIDIA has improved and added to their DLSS suite over time. So yeah, the new DLSS 4 version has certainly impressed me and makes these ray trace games much more usable and enjoyable to play with ray tracing enabled. So if you want to support Hardware Unbox and our independent testing here, we do have our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to some pretty cool benefits, Discord community, monthly live streams, we actually just did one of those, so you can go watch the replay of that. We've got BTS content, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.